In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the ASP.NET 2.0 quiz engine that we've been working on. We're going to take a look at snapshot number four, and we had two basic goals for this snapshot. The first goal was to tackle the saving of the test results into the database. So to set up the scenario again, the user will come in, select a test to take. Uh, they'll wind up on the questions.aspx page. You'll recall from there that they'll keep hitting the next button after they make their selection for the correct answer. And as they get to the end of the questions, they'll come to this results.aspx page, which will display each of their selections and whether it was correct or incorrect. By selecting the little link to the left-hand side, they'll be able to then view the particulars for that given question. They'll see the question text, all the possible answers, and then which the cor was the correct answer, and finally a textual explanation as to why that particular answer was uh, right or wrong. Now up to this point in time, we've only been displaying the results. We haven't saved the results back into our quiz.mdf database. And so that's one of the things that we need to do uh, for this snapshot. And after we've saved uh, the results to the database, we'll need to display them. And you recall from uh, our discussion in the previous two videos, we're going to attempt to display those uh, here in on the uh, default.aspx page under test results history. So we'll display what the quiz uh, name was, whether when it was completed, the date and time, uh, the correct answer count, and the number of questions. And ideally, we would want to display the percentage correct. If we saw that in our mock-up. Uh, however, we'll talk about this in just a moment. Kind of ran into some problems in terms of how to get that information displayed. Uh, let's step back and look at our results.aspx page, particularly the code that will save our test results into our database. Let's take a look at the results.aspx.cs file. And if you'll take a look at our page load, we're going to make sure, first of all, uh, to only review the code from line 21 to approximately 35, where we're checking to make sure that we're not posting back. So this is, should only run the very first time that the page is displayed to the user, okay? not any subsequent times that the user may have clicked on the little links next to uh, the individual questions. Okay? Uh, so basically here, what we wanted to do is create a new SQL data source. And so look at this as an example of creating a data source purely through code. Up to this point, we've been dragging and dropping uh, the data source either from the toolbox or going to our, um, our data menu item uh, to create a new SQL data source. In this case, we're just going to create one from scratch. We're going to set the connection string and the insert command, and then set the insert parameters uh, using the insert parameters dot add method to uh, insert, uh, first of all, the name of the parameter, the value of the parameter, and do that for each one. And notice that these parameters, these four parameters we've listed, are contained in our insert command through the simple use of an at symbol before the name of the parameter that we want to identify. Okay, so the quiz ID, date, time, complete, correct answer count, and username all correspond to these input parameters that we have specified here within the value section of our insert SQL command. And then we simply call the insert command of our SQL data source. Now, unfortunately, I chose a bad name. We'll correct this in the next snapshot. Uh, I just wanted to see if this would work, and then I kind of got stuck into using it. We'll rename it. We'll refactor it uh, so that it is uh, uh, given a more appropriate name. However, after testing this, it was very simple to um, use this, this uh, SQL data source to set uh, insert command, set the parameters, and then insert the record into the database. In previous versions of ADO.NET, it would not have been quite this simple. So this is a welcome improvement to the, uh, the data access model. So now that we've successfully saved the data in the database, we're going to need to display the results to the user back on our default.aspx page. OK, first of all, let's start, start at the top of the page. You can see here that I have data bound the available tests. I set the SQL data source to basically just pull 
all of the uh, just the title from the quiz okay now the first challenge that I uh, came to is that I realized I might want to display some additional information about each of the tests that I wanted to make available. So right now I simply have a title, but perhaps we're going to need more information. Uh, for example, a description. Um, so this really forced me to first of all reconsider my quiz tables design. So we may need to come back to that. But as a first pass, I was able to at least bind the title. Uh, to a listing here and you'll notice that I also need to then create some sort of a hyperlink that when you click it it will send the user to the start page so we haven't done that yet and the reason we haven't done that is because I ran into a little bit of a problem that caused me to rethink a lot of things and that is in this second grid on the default.aspx page the test result history uh, my biggest challenge in this snapshot was performing the calculation of the percentage correct in the test results history. As you can see, I have the, the final two columns, correct answer count and the number of questions displayed. Uh, but performing that third calculation where I would actually get a percentage proved to be a little bit challenging. Now, if I'm only storing the total number of correct answers, I have to pair that up with the total number of questions on a given test, and that's going to probably require a pretty hairy query on my part and I went down that path and I'll show you what I came up with but I think it could I think it can be done and uh, but then I'd still have to figure out a way to perform the percentage calculation either in the SQL query or in the control itself and after spending uh, 15 minutes 30 minutes looking at it and thinking of solutions for it I just decided that maybe I need to scrub that and rethink uh, the user quiz tables design. Let's take a look at the data source and I'll show you the direction I was heading down before I came to this conclusion. So I'm going to click configure data source. We're going to then here take a look at uh, this select statement. I actually use the query builder to help uh, design this. However, as you can see, it's so convoluted at this point, the query builder can't even help me out. Uh, essentially, what I wanted to do was attempt to join uh, the user quiz table to the quiz table on the quiz ID field, so that's what this line of the SQL does. Then as you can see, I tried to um, do a count of the number of questions for a given quiz, and then all the rest of the uh, information from user quiz, like the date time complete, the correct answer count, uh, the quiz title, and so on, and then needed to group by and use a having statement as well. And so this was, again, fairly complex. I uh, spent a lot of time and, and wound up spinning my wheels because it never quite gave me the results that I really needed. And so that's a tip. Whenever you find yourself really fighting the tool, uh, you may want to think, am I doing the right thing here? Maybe there's a more simple solution, a way to rethink how I'm going about this that would make life a lot easier. So I decided that I needed to fundamentally step back and rethink the database design and think how I wanted to save data into the database so that I could display it uh, a little more succinctly than having to go jump through so many hoops in order to aggregate the data into this test result history. So I stopped what I was doing on snapshot number four. So this snapshot will probably not work completely if you were to load it up and try to execute it yourself or try to run it. Uh, so I put everything on pause, decided to go back to the drawing board and work on snapshot 5 where I rethink the database structure and the underlying code to support that. So we're currently looking at snapshot number five. Uh, this snapshot started with me working on the database layout. So if we take a look at the database explorer and look at, first of all, the quiz table, you'll notice that I simply added a new description field. Uh, I believe it's um, probably like var char max or something along those lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and just open it up. Table definition. And you can see, yes, indeed, it's varchar max, and it's also nullable. The next thing that I did was I uh, made a change to the user quiz table. You'll notice that essentially it's exactly the same. I changed, though, from the number of correct questions to the concept of a score. So let's go ahead and take a look at the definition for this table. 
as you can see, it's a tiny int. So this will be a value that will equate to basically 0 to 100, um, a simple percentage. So if there were, for example, um, 20 questions in a quiz and the user answered 15 of those correctly, their score would be 75. And that's more in line with how we think about tests in terms of percentages correct. Instead of uh, looking at, um, you know, 15 questions correct out of possible 20 and having to do the math in our own head. So. Uh, that is what I decided to do to take that route. Again, if this is something that doesn't suit your needs, if you're planning to use this in the future, you can simply add in a few more fields to, uh, to record the number of, of um, uh, correct answers versus the number of total questions on a given quiz. Okay, so there were several things that needed to change from the previous snapshot in order to accommodate this. Let's start, first of all, in how we're displaying information now. You'll notice that I really upgraded the available tests um, uh, data list that I was using from the previous snapshot. Uh, I essentially uh, selected the edit template uh, selection in order to change the item template. So you'll see here that I used a hyperlink and a label and although it doesn't really show up as we're working in this item template uh, mode, um, I set the cascading style sheet classes so that they'll be displayed uh, in such a way that it has that attractive um, a formatting that my graphic artist friend uh, created for me and then basically bound these to our data source and I expanded the data source to include uh, not only the title from our quiz table but also the description which will now display in the description label so let's go ahead and just end template editing Okay. So you can see here that what it's going to look like when it's finished, as we when we'll run it, and then we move on to the test result history. You can see now this is a much more simplified uh, grid. We're going to have the title of the quiz, when it was completed, the date timestamp, and then finally the score of the quiz. And to accommodate this, let's take a look at the data source and we have a much more simplified SQL statement now that we work with. We're still going to create a join between user quiz and the quiz table, but the data that we need to, to uh, select, we don't have to do any aggregations, and so that greatly simplifies things. So let's go ahead and cancel this. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't also, before we run this application, show you the other changes that were made as well. And in fact, the changes that we made affected pretty much every page in the site. For example, I went ahead and linked up the available tests to the start page so that when a user selects one of the available tests, it will pull up the start page. Okay. And how do we do this? We need to not only send uh, a request, essentially a link to the start page, but we need to send uh, which test that the user is interested in taking. So let's revisit what we've done here. Go back to the edit templates, select our hyperlink, and take a look at the properties. And you'll notice that the text is a bound property. Uh, also, the navigate URL is a bound property as well and I don't really want to, uh, to change anything about it. Um, if we look at the edit data bindings, you can see that in the navigate URL, I was able to do a custom binding code expression. So it's going to send it to start.aspx question mark. So we have our query string, test ID equals, and then we're going to add in eval quiz ID. This eval statement will grab the current data item, basically whatever value is stored in quiz ID according to our SQL data source that we're currently bound to, okay, and it will insert that value 
into this expression. Same thing is true for the text property. We're simply doing an eval title there. Nothing special. Okay. And then here, we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're, for the text, we're just doing an eval description. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this and see what that will look like now. All right, so let's log in. Remember, it's admin, and then P, capital P, A, S, S, at, W, O, R, D, the number one, and click login. Okay, so let's see how this uh, manifested itself. You can see here that I have taken several quizzes, and here's the results, and you can see what the available tests are here. And when I hover my mouse cursor over a given uh, quiz, notice at the very bottom uh, we'll have the... Uh, uh, it dis the, the link displayed right under here that I'm about to click on and notice that the test ID equals 1 or the test ID equals 2. So our, uh, our evaluation expression uh, worked just great. Uh, that's all going to work just fine. So uh, we're going to look at next the start page um, in just a moment. But uh, also while we're here, take a look at the test result history. Uh, this was the most recent uh, test that I took, and notice that it was a, I scored a 75. Some of these were uh, scores that were saved into the database in previous runs where I, uh, I essentially uh, just changed the name of the field, and so it was still saving the number of questions correct, not the percentage. So you can ignore some of those earlier tests. Okay, so let's stop right here and then take a look at our start page and see what we had to do to change that. First of all, I think I changed up a little bit of the text here, nothing really big, but the real magic happens in the start.aspx.cs file. And this is where I grab the request query string test ID, make sure that it's not null. If it is null, then direct them back to the default.aspx. Somehow they got here without sending us a test ID. But assuming they did give us a test ID, then we should wind up in lines 28 and 29 here, where we're essentially just going to grab off the test ID uh, from our query string, test ID parameter, save it into an integer called test ID, and then add that to our session. So we basically removed our hard-coded number one quiz ID and replaced it with a dynamic value from the default.aspx page. So that's the major change that we made there. Let's take a look at the questions page. I'm not sure that we made any changes here. Let's just review it briefly. Okay, pretty much looks exactly the same. May have corrected a little uh, problem that we had here in line 35 uh, in order to make sure we hit the end of the quiz correctly. Uh, the m biggest change came in the results page. So let's take a look at results.aspx.cs. Uh, essentially, Let's go ahead and move some things over here. The biggest change was accommodating this new concept of, of a percentage instead of an absolute number of questions right or wrong. And so let's back up here a couple of lines of code and just walk through this. Okay, so we'll start in line approximately 27. You can see, first of all, we need to calculate the score. So we're going to grab the number of questions for the current quiz. And we're going to keep track of the number that are correct. We're going to perform the loop to determine how many are correct and incorrect. And so we're going to loop through each of the items within our answer list, which is essentially an array list. Uh, cast those to type answer and then check the value of uh, the result. And you'll notice here that you may have expected a literal string correct or incorrect. Felt a little bit of bad about that. Uh, didn't want to use uh, magic strings. Instead chose to change to an enumeration. So let's briefly jump over here to the answer.cs file. Go to the very bottom and you can see that I have created a new result value enumeration that I use in my read-only result value uh, rather result property of type result value. So I'll either return result value dot correct or result value dot incorrect. Okay. So I'm going to evaluate that back over here in line 37, 38. 
If it's correct, then I'll increment correct by 1, and then we'll calculate the score by dividing the correct answers by the number of total questions and multiplying that number by 100. So then, the next piece of this should look similar to what we did in the previous snapshot. I changed the name from this nebulous idea of test to uh, user quiz data source. And so I set the connection string and the insert command for our user quiz data source, changing up uh, our new score uh, column and accepting a new score uh, input parameter. Set the input parameters, uh, the insert parameters, rather just as before in lines 47 through 50. And then finally, perform the insert. And this time, I've added a small check here to see and make sure that uh, we have indeed inserted rows into the database. If not, then I have uh, basically put something on our form that says there was a problem saving your quiz results into our database. Therefore, the results from this quiz will not be displayed on the list on the main menu. And where is this error label? Let's take a look at the results.aspx page, let's see our design. And you can see here that we inserted an error label, which will only be displayed if there indeed is a problem. So let's go through the entire sequence of events now. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. We'll log in. And uh, we can review the previous scores. Let's go ahead and uh, take our bridge of death test. And I'm not going to really pay attention. I'm just going to uh, click answers and then go to the next one and the next one. And you can see that in this particular case, I only got one correct out of possible uh, four. And so I also have this little return to main menu. Let's see if this particular test is recorded. It is, and you can see my score is only 25. So that's about it for this particular video and for Snapshot 5. Uh, at this point, we just have some cleanup to do. We'll need to uh, review some, uh, some of our code and see if there's opportunities for some exception handling, we'll want to look into what it takes to make our application skinnable so that it can be customized for um, uh, individual users and uh, look at what it will take to deploy this application. And we'll cover those in the next snapshots in the next video. Thank you.